You might want to elevate it there a little, Joe. Yeah. We're going to point that at the Coast Guard. Hello. I'm Paul Ferrace, director of the USS Cod Submarine Memorial, and we're on Cod's after 40 millimeter gun mount. Helping me out is our uh, expert tour guide, Joe Bartelmi. Say hi, Joe. Hello, everybody out there. Now, we're here to uh, not talk in great detail about the, uh, the 40 millimeter gun mount. Uh, anybody with uh, a Google access portal can find all kinds of important information. Uh, these guns, uh, designed by the uh, uh, Bowforce Company, uh, were licensed uh, for production around the world, and virtually every uh, combatant involved in World War II, with the exception of, I believe, Imperial Japan, had a version of their, of their gun in combat. Um, there were single barrel, there were twin barrel mounts, there were quad mounts in, on U.S. Navy ships. Uh, the Army used these guns uh, in uh, single uh, carriage uh, mounts, uh, towed arrays um, uh, for anti-aircraft defense. Um, and certainly uh, the, uh, the, the, the Bofors guns mounted on the U.S. Navy surface ships were uh, uh, very effective anti-aircraft guns. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, there were uh, uh, some... Uh, with the uh, uh, power driven uh, uh, aiming and elevation. As you can see, uh, Joe and I are, are hand cranking ours around here. Um, but uh, what we want to dispel is uh, the, uh, the notion that these were anti-aircraft guns when mounted on submarines. They were not. Uh, the Navy nomenclature for this is heavy machine gun um, and it has a, a in a, in a manual gravity feed uh, uh, condition has a pretty good rate of fire. Joe, what is the rate of fire on this? Yeah, so I can guarantee you, you fire eight rounds out of this barrel, and uh, based on color movies of COD shooting uh, her uh, uh, this, in fact, this very gun. Uh, after eight rounds, that barrel is very hot. In fact, one of our crewmen is seen in the color movies burning his arms. He rests his hands on it for just a moment. Uh, but these were uh, provided to submarines uh, exclusively for engaging small, fast-moving uh, surface targets. Uh, you didn't shoot at airplanes. Uh, you spotted an aircraft unless you knew uh, that he knew that you were a friendly submarine you dove, in, particularly in a patrol zone, uh, any uh, contact with an aircraft uh, was uh, standard practice was to dive for uh, protection. Um, in one case, uh, and I don't remember exactly the name of the submarine, but uh, the captain uh, stayed surfaced and engaged a Japanese aircraft. Lucky for him, he shot him down. But when he returned from that patrol, he was uh, uh, reprimanded severely for risking the boat. Uh, and crew engaging in an enemy airplane. Uh, and as certainly as we know, uh, COD has enough bullet holes uh, on her conning tower and deck from uh, aircraft strafing and uh, close encounters with uh, aircraft uh, bombs. Uh, you don't want to engage an airplane. You literally would have to hit him with the 40 millimeter shell to do any damage. Uh, the enemy aircraft, all he had to do was strafe you and puncture your pressure hull or drop a bomb close ab uh, aboard and uh, he can uh, sink you. So uh, they were quite effective against junks. Uh, most of the submarines in the Southwest Pacific Command in uh, uh, World War II, uh, the last uh, year of the war, the summer of 45 particularly, were uh, sent on junk interdiction uh, missions. And uh, the 40 was a very effective weapon uh, when trying to put a, uh, an enemy junk on the bottom. Uh, now we're pointing this at the Coast Guard. Uh, they're our friends and, and they know that we, we don't have ammunition for our 40. Um, and of course, uh, we were uh, very happy to uh, get help from our friends aboard USS Pampanito uh, back in the early 90s in uh, getting our 40 millimeters uh, restored to uh, at least uh, the appearance of fully functional. Uh, so uh, we have a little debt of gratitude, uh, as well as uh, to the uh, U.S. Navy 
History and Heritage Command for uh, providing uh, uh, the basic gun mounts as well. Because of course, when COD came to Cleveland in 1959, uh, we had no deck guns. Now, uh, it's a topic for another uh, uh, program, uh, but let, suffice to say, it did not uh, require any uh, involvement with the Canadians and didn't involve a treaty. So uh, that's basically the lesson we want to convey. Uh, 160 rounds uh, uh, in the current configuration. These guns uh, uh, in a highly modified, modernized uh, uh, models are still in service today with brilliant ammunition that has proximity fusing and, and a whole lot of wicked uh, uh, modern uh, capabilities. Uh, of course, power driven, radar directed uh, gun mounts. As you can see, we have these basic open mounts uh, for quick and, and easy, reliable gun laying. Uh, so that's all we really have to say this time. Uh, we've got a couple targets out there. We're going to scare away some jet skiers. Uh, Joe, let's stow the gun and uh, remember to hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell, and we'll be back for more. Thank you.